Hey, what's up everyone? It's new here doing a little late night live stream straight onto YouTube. What am I doing here? I am coming out to you with a video featuring a reaction to a new favorite streamer of mine, I guess you could say. Uh, Kobe Black Mamba. You might be familiar with him. He's pretty big time. Uh, a hard worker, streams something like eight hours a day, makes videos on the daily. Um, somebody I always have been subscribed to for some time. Yes, even before <laughs> he made a video featuring me. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, uh, you must be making a reaction to his video featuring you, right? No, actually, that's not what I'm doing because uh, this is a video I wanted to make before any of that went down. Uh, Kobe is somebody that I pay close attention to. As I said, I was already subscribed to him because his content always features things that are pretty relevant to what I'm doing, whether it's just kind of in general uh, end game PoE stuff. It's usually kind of end game related and he does a lot of magic find stuff on his channel lately. Of course, I I'm, have been developing a magic find uh, tornado shot raider, which is coming along very nicely. You can check the POB down below uh, if you want to see that one. It is actually pretty close to finished. It needs a few upgrades, but at least it's definitely in good working condition if you want to see it. Uh, but here we're going to start this video off right up the top with uh, one of Kobe's videos. Featuring the Apothecary. Why you can no longer find the Apothecary. Now he came out with this video a little over a week ago. And, you know, whereas I generally agree with almost everything he says in his videos. He said something kind of odd here in the opening of this video. Let's just go straight into it. I want to show you what he said. He says it right off the top in the first 30 seconds or so. Let's listen together. Hey, what's up YouTube? Today you're gonna see the face of a broken person as he tries to farm the patient card and you can look at my face, I don't look happy at all. Now why might that be the case? Because I've done over 50 Delimir promenades and I still don't have a patient divination card. So at this point I'm pretty much wondering what exactly is going on. How is it Say possible what? not to drop a patient divination maps, card? Because I'm zero looking at my dying cards? anguish cards and I have a lot of dying anguish cards so... The hell? For anyone that doesn't know, most people farm Promenade and Delimir pretty much because it has two really good cards, which is the Patient and Dying Anguish, which is alt quality gem. Yeah, I've done Delimir farms every league almost <laughs> on Promenade. Uh, I find plenty of Patient cards, find them all the time. So I know it's not a very rare card. I mean, not even anywhere close to the same level as the Apothecary card. Uh, not even close to like seven years bad luck or the enlightened card. It's actually way more common than those even. Now, a lot of people used to do promenades in the past. They used to get three, four, five, six patients yeah. in one map. Maybe Me too. even eight patients in I've a done map. That. Now, this lead, you're getting zero. I've done over zero. He says I'm going to get zero cards if I do the promenade. 50 Delimir promenades. And I kid you not, 50 juice Delimir promenades using polish or gilded divination scarab on every single one of them and i found absolutely zero now at this point you must be thinking that something is wrong maybe my account is flagged for lower drops actually yeah that's, but that's just not the case so what we're I'm gonna thinking. go into exactly why this is happening and also this pretty much all right well that was the opening of the video he's going to talk more about divination card uh, farming in general from there on check out the video give him a subscribe for sure he deserves it yet. Um, but anyway, this is, I'm, I'm being a little bit cheeky by showcasing him here, but I, I'm using his video as the crux for this video because actually there's some more serious undertones is what I want to bring to you today uh, on the information side. I think I can bring a lot of value to you guys um, by kind of mimicking the sort of test that Kobe did. Uh, however, I'm not going to do 50 maps because I don't feel like doing 50 maps just to showcase that. Uh, but as I understand it, he was doing some pretty heavy juicing. Honestly, like like heavier than just kind of what I've been doing lately. And, but there's a kicker. Uh, the ju type of juice he's doing is kind of similar to what you see I have on my Atlas tree. Now, truth be told, I wasn't able to, to identify exactly what his Atlas tree looked like. I wasn't able to identify exactly what he was doing. But I did actually go into his Twitch VOD and find the exact streaming day that he experienced this. And, you know, he, he did a lot of different promenade maps throughout the day. He wasn't just running them all straight like I do. Um, so I, I couldn't verify that he did actually 50 maps. It sounds, honestly, it sounds unbelievable <laughs> that he could do 50 maps. Uh, even Al can go. 
even it sounds unbelievable that you do 50 Alcango promenade maps and not find a single uh, patient. But, but I have no reason not to believe him. There is such a thing as atrociously horror bad RNG, I guess, could happen. Uh, but I want to see for myself, and I want to showcase to you guys an apples to apples comparison uh, to juicing the more traditional way, like what you see here, a nice little uh, pretty tree here, versus juicing my way <laughs> with Strongbox. Yeah, and you know, I'm just gonna do eight maps. I think the, the patient card is common enough. I can kind of get this point across in eight maps, but even if for some reason there's something wrong and I really don't get any patient cards either way, uh, we do have the Undying Anguish and we can kind of compare there. Now, this is going to be a test run of eight maps uh, with the sort with the current tree that you see right here. And then I'm gonna do eight maps with this, basically the same tree that I've been using uh, just to farm off stream. And you'll see it here shortly. Uh, I'm going to cut this video. You can check out the Twitch, uh, Twitch VOD that I have. Uh, it, it'll be up there and it'll be in the description below. If you wanna see it totally uncut, you can do that. But I am just gonna try and keep this video fairly short. Uh, so you see here, uh, this is a very traditional juicing looking tree uh, for a delirium mirror farm. You've got the mandatory delirium mirror nodes here on a promenade. Uh, there is a blight scarab involved. I was able to verify that Kobe used blight, legion, and abyss, as well as divination for his scarabs, all polished or uh, gilded. I wasn't able to verify exactly what sextants he uses, uh, but anyway, he probably didn't go any shrine nodes. But you know, I was able to fill this out nicely and, and block off the things I'm not doing. Um, Still get uh, the, the more important Abyss nodes for juicing. Still get all the relevant Alva nodes for juicing. Get all of the quantity wheels inside and outside as well as the increased effect of non-unique map modifiers. And then Legion is involved because Legion is just crazy popular this league. So everybody's doing Legion. Um, not every single Legion node is taking, but all the ones that are kind of relevant to adding monsters onto the map are taken. And then Eater of Worlds for more altars. There, uh, I think honestly, his, his tree probably looks similar to mine. A singular focus, even doing shaping of the valleys. Uh, he might have been doing wandering path. I don't know. It's not super important that I do exactly what he did. What's important is that I showcase you uh, juicing a map uh, like this with more traditional league mechanics that usually, or at least used to, drop a lot of divination cards. And you'll see I have not taken anything in Beyond. Now I could have done Beyond, but <laughs> I think. <laughs> Beyond, the point has been driven home hard enough that Beyond is nowhere near as good as it used to be. It's probably not the best thing to do. So I haven't even taken any points in Beyond. Uh, yeah, let's see what the Scarabs are going to be here. It's going to be a Polished Blight Scarab. You know, for a little few extra monsters there. Uh, polished Legion could do. Rusted Legion wouldn't make a big difference, honestly. Uh, Gilded Abyss. This one is kind of important to get the higher juice levels on Abyss. And then Gilded Divination card, or Gil Gilded Divination Scarab, because we're serious <laughs> about fine farming Divination Scarabs. For the uh, Sextant, I have a Mirror of Delirium, Legion, plus one Abyss, Hunted Traders, uh, I don't know what else to really put there. Uh, it does just, I mean, I could put Beyond on there, honestly. Uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and, and give you a sneak preview about what we're doing here. I'm doing uh, a little Elder, Strongbox, Harbinger, Divination. I've been doing this for a long time now. A Mirror of Delirium, Double Strongbox Sextants with Hunted Traders. I switch out this one sometimes. This is the 8 Mod Corrupted Sexton or Hunted Traders or Beyond or... There might be something else I might do, but ba mainly those three. Or Gloom Shrine, rather. Yeah, that's the one thing about Gloom Shrine. But I don't need the Gloom Shrine anymore because... Da, 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 I'm still doing this one, baby. This is super nice. Absolutely in love with this. Fury of Nature combined with Herald of Ice, which is now inside a Pariah at level 23. Woo! Packs a punch at level 23. I'm telling you what. That is nice. All right, so... Yeah, uh, there's a magic find character. I got 60% quantity and 180% uh, rarity. You can kind of catch it on the stream if you see. If I pop all my flask, you can see it says 45, 49, whoop, 60, 180. You got to catch it pretty quickly, but it depends on the divination distillate. Oh, there. So that's probably about all the rarity I'm going to get. Once I get a mirrored bow, I'll probably switch out 5 link into a rarity support for the 6 gem. And I'll get a little more rarity there, but I think I'm basically done with the magic find side of it. It's a balanced magic find approach. It's the way I like it. Uh, and you'll probably be surprised just how fast and efficient this character is with that much quantity and rarity on gear. Now the maps are 8 mod corrupted. I I've even went out of my way to kind of match up the, the pack size on here. Uh, you know, it gets a little bigger on the second map. Start getting quality uh, chiseled in. And then there's a beyond map for the last map on both test sides. 
Again, not going to be keeping track of the currency. I'm not going to use excellence for this. We're just going to dump everything into my dump tabs, which I'm glad I reminded myself. I need to un affinity all of these things. And then we're just going to count the number of patient cards and undying anguish for the first eight maps versus the number for the second eight maps. As you can see, with the scarabs, the sextants, and the tree, clearly the top test is way more juice. Way more juice than the bottom side, obviously. And I'm going to clear the maps. I'm going to clear the, the maps much more slowly as well. Uh, I'm going to get way more simulacrum splinters, though, so that'll be nice. Anyway, uh, again, if you want to see the full video, check out the VOD in the uh, Twitch description down below. You can check out the POB and check out the Atlas trees. They'll all be there. Uh, I am going to be cutting this video, though, for the sake of keeping it fairly short on YouTube. Let's go map number one. What is that doing there? Hmm. My mana is gone. Okay. Put everything in here nice and pretty. Get rid of that map. Uh, again, so I'm using Shaping of the Valley, so I'm going to use Fortune Favors the Brave and Eater of Worlds and Alva. So I'm not using an Alva Sex, and I'm, I'm doing this the hard way. Like, this is serious Giga Juice business going on right here. Here's map number one. Now, the cool thing is, is uh, you'll, you can also see kind of how I'm doing, this handling Deli Mirror. Um, controlling the Deli Mirrors can be kind of tricky. Actually, very tricky. In fact, you really don't want to do a league mechanic instantly off the front end of the map or you'll freeze the mirror way too soon. So you see, I'm just kind of going to stroll around here and take my time. In the very beginning, I, I know how to control a deli mirror pretty well. I know a lot of people have requested that I make a video showcasing that. I think that would be a very smart video for me to make. Uh, it sounds like a lot of work. I kind of got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm not going to worry about Alva rooms, by the way. Okay, so an abyss is moving. I actually didn't even mean to trigger that abyss. That was a little awkward, but uh, oh well. You know, this is a juicy abyss. It's got a lot of pack size on it. Certainly got a lot of pack size. I'm actually a little bit concerned. Are you dead serious? I, I see a red triangle on the front. Of this. No way. Oh, what the heck? What the heck, Kobe? What the heck, bro? Five. What? 50 maps and I got it in like half a second? Dude. Okay. <laughs> a Doriana's prototype and an Aegisar. What is going on? What is going on? No, this is not what I wanted. I did not want this to be amazing. I wanted this to be bad so I could showcase. Okay, well, I, ju I just had some of the best RNG in my entire life as far as, like, a five-second swing of RNG. <laughs> oh, my God. Aegis Aura with the Doriana's prototype dropped at the same time? What is even happening right now? Well, you know, I did mention in the Crimson Temple video that the way I make my videos is I stream the introduction and then I go and I keep things uncut and whatever happens happens and it happened that just happened sorry y'all <laughs> but the live chat going ballistic right now that's fun though isn't it yeah somebody said if a mirror mirror drops I'm quitting the game forever <laughs> so if you're wondering why the highlight reel never cut yet that's that's a lie I had no reason to cut there that was too soon Maybe it'll cut now, though. I don't know. What the hell? Okay. So, uh, we've already got one patient card. Which I was, uh, not supposed to see. At all, I think. <laughs> the second, second, second patient card. I actually was kind of expecting not to find any patient cards on the first map or two, to be completely honest with you guys, but I, I don't know. Tell me your results in the description below. This, this can't be right. What the heck? 
Ooh. Anyway. 30 something headhunter buffs. Actually am I'm actually powerful right now. <laughs> For once. Yeah, that's what it looks like on the Crimson Temple. Clear stuff. I'm gonna try to like... Oh shit, we got instant touch. Hello, massive scarab drop. Woo! With some magic find. I think my divination distillate was up there. A lot of scarabs. Big scarab drops. Nice, that clear would have made it in time for this abyss in the middle of this run. We're at like 80% deli here. Beautiful innocence touch going off there. Boss is getting destroyed. I don't really care about that abyss anymore. Let me make sure I uh, handle this. Patient card. Might have been a hunted trader. I'm not sure. It's just some random monster in the map. Whoa! Big time! Oh my goodness! Major drop there. Obviously a currency-based touched monster there. One Exalt, one Divine Orb. You can see the quantity is pretty high on that one. That's so many Alchemy Orbs. Jesus Christ, what the heck? Ah, uh, yeah. So it's nice you got to see a juicy... Uh, oh, it's Lunar. It was a Lunaris touched monster. I saw the... Uh, I saw the action on my end. The stolen buff effect. Major speed train, eh? Oh no! I almost, uh, okay, I ran into the wall of the mirror, front of the mirror, and now I'm stuck here. Can't even do anything. Alright, I can at least do the Alva. The Alva, the mirror gets frozen while doing Alva. I don't think it freezes afterwards, though. Should be fine. Stalling out in the middle from the mirror not moving forward is really bad, though, because I have headhunter buffs and trying to maintain. Now let me uh Anu what? These things are dropping right and left. These cards are worth like 40 chaos a pop. I don't know how these cards are dropping. Well, you know, the funny thing is, it, it, if this completely goes on goes sideways, it's fine. I'll just post it. I'll be like, well, I was wrong. And so was Kobe. <laughs> We we're both wrong. <laughs> Apparently, juicing is fine. Like traditional style juicing. And yeah, the re results, not typical, I guess. Okay, here we go. This is the first time I'm actually getting like a full-blown legion. come back and loot later. That was part of my problem. I tried to loot too soon. Premature looting. Okay, we're back with the Atlas filled out properly for the second farm. This is my favorite farm on Crimson Temple. It's super high-paced, fast, and it's not really designed super well for promenade. You know, I may change my Atlas for promenade in order to juice up some more Simulacrum Splinter farming because this is not going to produce a high number of Simulacrum Splinters. I only had one really good map on the promenade farm that got me 246 Simulacrum Splinters, but that was on account of a lot of things spawning towards the end. Uh, so yeah, it might be possible to get 300 with what I was just doing, but not likely. Uh, some t a lot of times it was just 250, to or 150 to 200 rather. Uh, you can see Beyond is on here. Now, the reason I put Beyond on here is because there's just nothing else that's super fast 
and quick and easy to go and uh, I go ahead and use the Elder Scarab. You know, I could sub out the Beyond Points, put it in some Legion or something, but um, the Beyond Monsters still drop Tainted Currency. <laughs> I've yet to confirm they drop any global drops, though definitely haven't noticed a card dropping from them. So the drops table still seems to be pretty awful. Uh, but, you know, Tainted Exalted Orbs, Tainted Mythic Orbs and stuff, those things are worth quite a bit, actually. So now this tree is ready to go. We're going to do strong box, clot farming, focus, and we're going to see if I can beat eight, uh, 13 patient cards in 8 maps. I don't know <laughs> if I can do that, actually. We'll find out. No Alva this time. So it's just, it's just so much less juice on the map. But I will finish the maps quickly, and I should have reported that it took me basically one hour. My mana uh, I'll probably run a little faster once I get used to the speed, used to how to, how I should do it. But, you know, that this first little test session, it took me one hour to do eight maps uh, with the higher juicing degrees. Of course, no more fortune favors the brave. We're going straight into ambush, and we're focusing on strong box quantity farming. A lot of extra stuff going to drop from the strong boxes, including a lot of patient cards. Uh, and I don't know, maybe another Aegis or maybe 30 divines worth of loot will drop in the first 20 seconds of this map like before. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we'll see about that. And we're off. Okay, basically the worst strong boxing game spawned up front. The <laughs> strange barrel. Not the one I want to see. Now I am used to farming promenade this way, and what I do is I go ahead and clear like strong boxes and whatever leak mechanics harbingers up front until I get to a certain point in the map, like halfway through, and then I'll just book it to the end. Uh, it can be difficult. This is actually kind of challenging to do because I don't have much. I don't have good access to headhunter buffs, but if, as long as I, you know, progress quickly enough, like not what I'm doing right here, I should be going faster. Yeah, just getting all the wrong headhunter buffs. Keep getting this uh, assassin teleport buff, driving me nuts. So harbingers will feed me some headhunter buffs for sure. They are nice for that, nice and quick. It's becoming one of my favorite uh, league mechanics, actually. Not that I really enjoy doing Harbingers, but they are quick, and they do reliably give a decent number of Headhunter buffs. Not as much as Legion, but still not bad. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that really sucks. You know, the, the only reason I was even up there in that position is because I got teleported onto it. Oh wow, this is the first time I'm actually going to lose a Deli Mirror. That, that's a huge blow, and I'm going to lose a lot of uh, extra items because of it. Okay. I hadn't even fully put on my auras yet when I died. There. Well... Definitely not the way I wanted it to go. I, I got some kind of crazy rare on here. Oh, a unique boss guarding the strong box. A scuffed first map. Hopefully it won't make too much of a difference in the end. I just want the game to stop giving me teleport. Wow, double divine drop. Okay. Trying to figure out how to way to get uh, more reduced effect of chill. I think I'm gonna have to somehow get a corrupted implicit on my jewel, but I'm stuck. When I do these deli maps, I'm always really stuck with like 30% chilled for a lot of the time. Believe how slow I move on some of these maps. Like sometimes it's just crushing me. 
I have onslaught on kill, 100% chance. Oh, we got a big one. Yeah. Double divine off of the Solaris touched. Spawn straight out of the unique Arcanist strongbox. That's the pirate strongbox. They spawn tons of rares. They spawn like 10 rares or something. That, that's a very unique strong box that you won't see it very often. This little test run is shaping up to be more of a showcase on... God touched... Magnified farming. One patient to 1.6 dying anguish? Yeah, that could be it. Oh, patient card. But that's only two in four maps. It's abysmal. Huh? Hey, there's patient card on the stairwell. Probably a hunted trader. Are you enjoying Promenade or CT still? Um, I'm not a big fan of Promenade. I don't like the linearness of it. It makes it annoying. I've come to find that my favorite type of map to farm is one where, regardless of where I'm at on the map at any given time, the furthest location from me is still relatively close. So that's one reason I love crim uh, cemeteries because you know, if I'm on the opposite end of the map and I want to get to the other side of the map, it's no big deal. You know, I just run, run right over there. I think two, maybe three. I can't remember if I've ever gotten three Divine Orbs off one or not. I've definitely seen three Exalted Orbs off of one. For sure, I remember, I remember that. But I think Divine Orbs, I've only seen two. And that was before I was wearing any magnifying. I'm only beginning to farm with magnifying gear on. Okay, I finished pretty quickly too. Uh, it looks like it was about uh, not even two thirds of the time, a little over half the time uh, to get this. So that that is something major to take into consideration. Uh, an interesting thing I noticed in the results between the two, I wasn't actually depending to check this, but you see I have like one and a half simulacrums from eight maps uh, for the strongbox farming strategy. I, I actually bricked like two of the maps. <laughs> actually, I did pretty poor on the performance side of things uh, for the strongbox farm, unfortunately. And then for getting Alva on the first half, you know, eh, both sides, a little bit not so great. But anyway, you can see there's four full simulacrums here. Uh, for the first farm so that is quite a bit of extra value out of the delirium mirror by actually just putting stuff on the map and getting more delirium specific rewards of course you know this this is just one of those cases where i set out to make a video i was, yeah, I was fairly confident that uh, a certain thing was going to happen and that certain thing was i would find more patient cards on the strong box farm than i would on the other generic farm and that was just not even close to the truth. <laughs> so I got 13 on the first farm and 13 of each card. On the back side, I got four patients, only four. I went from 13 to four. And then I got actually more <laughs> dying anguishes though. So you can see here that this is some massive disparity uh, in the drop rates between the dying anguish and patient card 
drops here right? to, to get <laughs> more dying anguishes on the second one and then like a third like a third not even a third of the patient cards uh, so it's pretty obvious here that uh, there's a combination of me getting very lucky with patient card drops in the first farm and getting very unlucky with patient cards on the back end farm uh, that's how I would kind of put this. Uh, just so you know, I, w I wasn't going to talk about this, but since his results are so wildly skewed here, seemingly, uh, I've already done a 16 map test with the strong box strategy, and I found 20 patient cards in 16 maps, so more than one per map uh, when I did that test run. So I know for sure uh, that I should be getting way more than four patient cards in eight maps. Now, the nice thing is, is be this being a small sample size, I'm going to now... Get ready to do a hundred promenade maps, deli maps. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this exact strategy, but it definitely will involve strong box farming. That's something I just like that better because mainly because it's quick and easy. Do the map, nice and easy. Um, yeah. So some very interesting things happening in this test run that were totally unexpected was a couple of really S tier unique drops and. A Lunara, Solaris, and Innocence touched uh, draw, uh, spawned in 16 maps. That's pretty rare to see that. I could go 100 maps without even seeing any of them, potentially. Uh, the chat's here asking, so you think Crimson Temple's better than Promenade? Mm, I, don't, I don't know yet. Not necessarily. One Nurse card is two Divine Orbs. I mean, the Patient card is a pretty reliable drop, according to some people. Anyway. As for Kobe, I, I don't know. <laughs> I almost feel like he must have somehow accidentally removed that card from his uh, loot filter or something. I highly doubt that, but uh, anyway, that, that's so strange <laughs> to me. <laughs> he didn't see a single one in 50 maps. Uh, yeah, I, I'm seeing I'm seeing on average at least one a map between between both these farms. And for what I've seen in the past, I, I'm seeing at least I, I got a patient card to drop on my Atlas completion map when I did Alk, you know, chisel Alk and. Valor probably wasn't even chiseled. He just, you know, doing the promenade for the first time uh, this league, and uh, I remember a patient card dropped. Yeah. Well then, that's it for the results. I'm not going through uh, how much I made. I will. I will hang around with the chat after the YouTube portion of the video, and I will go ahead and see how much currency I make because it's going to be absolutely st stupendous amount of currency that I made uh, on account of these two items dropping here but uh, major outliers there yeah again results unexpected tell me what you think the results should have been and what kind of results are you finding here I'm curious about the promenade farm if you guys are th thinking it's good uh, that's probably a point of conjecture right now as to whether or not promenade is better divination card farming over crimson temple or vice versa uh, those two particular um, uh, tile sets you know the basically are you going for the jackpot apothecary drop or are you going for the consistent patient card and what do you think is better let me know in the comments below in the meantime as always we'll be coming out with more videos 100 promenade maps it's going to take me a little while to get that out but i will get it out nonetheless i will talk to you all later see you for now